What is this self that we're talking about? This arrogance, this selfishness. If you really want to be selfish, you have to understand the self. If you understand the self, then you have to feed the self. If you want to really feed the self, then you can see that surrounding people around you, even your environment, even your animals, are all a part of yourself. You can't simply hurt people around and you think that you're going to be happy. That is not the case at all. Why is it that so many people I've seen in North America that they're rich, wealthy, and com comparatively to people I've been in Egypt, in India, those guys have nothing. They're so oblivious of having things and just thinking about tomorrow. But when they eat their food, they're happy. They dance. Just... But here people have all of these things, but they're not happy. It's because that formula of the self is involved. Humanity, the whole thing is one self. Just like me, there's an Abbas, but there's billions of cells in my body. Every cell can indicate themselves as a thing. They are unit, united in diversity. The diversity formula of Shobhi, if any, allows that every cell is, has a nucleus, has a mitochondria, you know, has a powerhouse, has everything in it, the right bosoms. So they live for themselves. But together also they create a, another being. If you don't understand this huge being called humanity, when we don't serve the humanity as a cell, it's just like my hand is bruised and this other hand laughs. It wants to play with something else. Can it do that? No. When one hand goes down, the leg and everybody is just no good. They have to go to sleep, they gotta to go to the doctor, everybody falls into trouble. And this is a practical matter, it's not just some kind of a philosophy. When humanity in Africa is suffering, of course Bill Gates is not happy. How could he be? It's too much information, he knows what's going on and he has so much money. And he doesn't know, he just said, God, I'm not feeling depressed. The only thing he can do to get rid of the depression is to do something about it, as he does. You know, I don't approve of it, but still it's a sign of him responding to the bigger needs. He understands, you know, by the matter of evolution, because it was too big, saturated from everything that he has, now it's just overlapping and falling down. And he can see that others are a part of him. He has understood that, he has realized that. And he has to do something about it. But this kind of cure is like, you know, giving Tylenol uh, 3 to the guy who has a toothache. You gotta take him to doctors and extract his tooth out or fix it. It's giving painkiller uh, that's not gonna solve the problem. It's just for now, it's good. So people like him, because they're not Baha'i, because they don't have the huge programs, to work is like a guy at a computer is trying to do it does not have the window to work within that framework to continue to to communicate with others so uh, this self is very important as to know what do we mean when we say self you know uh, so uh, but many people say nah, I don't care about that guy and this and that. If you don't really care about others, how come if you see somebody in front of you is beaten up, they're torturing him? Most people, I don't know, 99.99 .99 unless they're sick, they cannot witness a man being tortured. They want to do something. They want to help. Why? Because there is something in him that's connected to you. It bothers you right there. But you have to see with your own eyes to understand. You know, there are a lot of things happen. A lot of people are getting tortured and dying tonight right now because of hunger. But you have to be intellectual to understand those things are there. And as a one person in the life of the humanity, you have to do something about it to see what the problem is and what you could do. So that is not the case. If we enter in a room and everybody is crying, can we laugh? Can we smile? No. It just penetrates into us like osmosis pressure. We get filled, they kind of sponge. The pain goes into us and we start to brood. And if they tell us, why are you feeling, you know, brooding your head and you're unhappy, you say, I don't know, I just see everybody else is unhappy. Same way if they're all happy and 
laughing and you enter, you, you know, instinctively you smile because people are connected to each other. So don't say that, hey, I don't care what happens to somebody. Actually, you do. If you don't, you're oblivious. A child doesn't care if there's, uh, his hand is into the germs and this and that because there's no immediate effect. An adult understand that. If you're like a child and you're oblivious, no problem. But you'll get it no matter who you are, child or adult or whatever. Others, you know, they say that we don't need religion. What religion? Religion for what? If that is the case, and you don't need the guidance of God in your communication with God, why is there so many problems in the West right now? I know the problem in the East because there's a bad religion. So in the West, there's no religion. So no religion is not helping the West at all. All the families are disrupting. The relationship between parents and children are no good. Parents, they basically, they like children as long as they're small and kid, uh, they're like a toy. Uh, they like them. As soon as they grow up, and, you know, they open their mouth and they show their individualism. And these people have not grown up, then they tell them that they uh, kick them right up because they can handle them. They haven't learned how to handle a child at the age 15 to 21 to 25. A human being is the most need of his parents, much more. But that, that's failing in the West, I've seen it. So the family, which is the social womb of the humanity, after the womb that we grow in as a baby for nine months as a fetus, and we come out, there we gain all this uh, you know, physical faculty, physical ability to be able to see around and communicate. Now, in 15 years, we have to grow within the womb of the family under the love of a mother and a father so that uh, we can become a strong character to be um, achieving our part in the society. But in the West, uh, there's not much of attention to uh, 15 to 20 years old kids. The best they can do is give them some money to do this and that. But they don't actually take time to go with a child to a movie, to sit down to read a book, uh, wholeheartedly to share. Even if they do it, it's not really out of what they feel to do. They'd rather be there with their friends. They don't want to be spending time with their own children. Just the love of it is not there. And this is the main mission of all the religions, including Baha'i to strengthen the relationship, a spiritual relationship between the people, especially at the level of family. So, no religion in the course of time has made us to be destroyed here. All the real characters are turned into fancy fantasy characters. How many people in Canada, they know Terry Fox? Every time I pass in Thunder Bay, I stop the car and I salute that man. What a man, the reality of him and what he did. But people don't know Terry Fox. You tell me, you know Batman? Oh yeah, Superman, sure. Spider-Man, hmm. Things that are not real. Why? Because the religion failed. They were not ethical. The old religion died. And Hollywood came in, 10% maybe did a good job, 90% they did not, and filled up the brain with too much of fantasy. Therefore, people are disillusioned. They live in a fantasy world. Most of the kids, they come out, society is too harsh, too real. They don't like reality. So we do, we do need religion. This is very, very important, you know, that we have to know ourselves who we are and how to function, all of our needs. Not like a guy who inherited a big, beautiful device. He doesn't know what to do. He thinks it's a hammer. Imagine you give a phone to somebody who has never seen a phone in his life. I don't know, some, some tribes in the world. They know what the phone is. They think it's a hammer, blank, blank, blank. They don't know this is not used for this, it's used for something else. So the body that we have is not to use for what we are doing it. It's very, very delicate. It's a computer. It's 
You don't turn your computer into the water. You don't let dust sits on it. How would you allow that to happen to your own body? Did you inhale a smoke or sitting even with the people who smoke? We don't care. It, thinks, it seems immortal. It's not. So we have to know physical and a spiritual part of ourselves in order to function, to be happy. After that, we definitely have to know surrounding people that we are connecting to because their happiness or unhappiness directly uh, uh, relates to us and uh, it's, we are a part of it, whether we like it or not. Depression of the man comes only because He's not relating himself to others. If you do through the osmosis pressure, that just goes on. It's like a hot potato. You put it in your hand, it burns. But if you have another guy, just get handed to him and he hands it to other one, other one hands it to other one. The thing circles around, nobody feels it till it dies down and cools down. We need to have other people to share when you know something comes in us. You know, maybe I have a problem with my wife that bugs me, but if I have a friend who has a problem with, uh, in his business and he shares his problem with me, I'm sharing my problem with him. His virus is ineffective to me because I don't have a business to be bothered by customers. And he doesn't have a wife. So my story... Was, so this exchange of virus, sometimes it gets rid of the stress, gets rid of the depression. So uh, I guess I insist that makes sense, that we know who are we and what this device, the body is, how does it function, to know about it. And um, our spirit, which I'm going to be talking next, later, 